Hey everybody, it's me Stacy here at Scrapbooking Made Simple, scrapbookingmadesimple.com and it is time for our next Saturday with Stacy, YouTube class number 394, counting down to 400. We'll do something fabulous for 400, I just don't know what yet, but we'll come up with something wonderful. Now today's class is a bit of the old, a bit of the new, a bit of the borrowed, and yeah, there's even some blue in here. <laughs> I'm gonna start so easy, super easy for those crafters who are just joining our channel, who is, they are just starting this hobby and perhaps have not seen die cutting before. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna be quick through it, as quick as I can be, but I'm gonna show basic die cutting and then we're going to move into something a little harder and then something a little more, ooh. And I think by the end, those of you who are so experienced in crafting may just go, hmm, I didn't know, or hmm, I forgot about that, but it sure looks pretty amazing. So I've got a wonderful class for you today. We've got Memory Box and New Simply Defined, the April release, and Sizzix, and uh, Stampendous, just a wonderful, wonderful lineup of products for you and hopefully some techniques that will make your heart swoon and just give you the, the, the urge to get into that craft room or whatever space you have available to you and start to play because that's what I'm gonna be doing today. I'm gonna be playing, <laughs> let's be clear. <laughs> Life's not so bad for me sometimes. <laughs> I get to sit here and for two hours just play. <laughs> For those of you who are new or joining us new, who've never seen me before, my videos are commercial free, they're very long, they're unedited, unscripted, un no voiceovers, and no, <laughs> no special lighting or cameras. I'm actually going to tilt the camera down when it's time to go down. So what you see is what you get, and all the oopses and the blubs and the oh wells, it all happens right there for you to to feel, hey, it's not just me that does that. That's how I feel, especially when we're live chatting Saturday mornings at the premiere of my YouTube classes, and I flub it, and somebody, they'll start typing, oh, been there, done that. It's like, whew. <laughs> okay, so update on the warehouse sale. This information only pertains to you if you were part of the warehouse sale, which was last year. That means if you got a $28 die for $1.99, that was you. You were part of the warehouse sale. Or if you got a $10 die for 99 cents, that was you. You were part of the warehouse sale. I'm going to update you with the most current numbers that we have, and hopefully that'll give you a gauge as to where you are in line. We are still on first day. We will be on first day for a while longer. First day represents over 80% of the orders we received. So the newest number I have for you, so if you are order number, I'm looking at it, 210-393, 210-393, or 392, or 391, or 390, or 389, all the way down to numbers in the 209s, well, you are in process somewhere. You have either already been shipped and you've been playing with your, your, your goodies for quite some time now, wahoo could you, or you are, all the numbers, 210393, all of those numbers are upstairs. So you're somewhere in fulfillment. You're either waiting to be pulled, your order is waiting to be pulled, or it's already been pulled and now waiting to be quality controlled or it's already quality controlled and waiting to be packed, or it's already packed and waiting to be shipped, or you've got your shipping information and it's on its way to you. Yay! Each stage we try to keep you updated online when it, it could go from payment received to awaiting fulfillment. That means you're upstairs and it could go from awaiting fulfillment to awaiting shipping and then from awaiting shipping to be shipped. So just follow your orders along and know that 210393 392, 391, 390, all the way into 209 numbers are what's in process. Now, if you haven't paid for your order and you're in that block of numbers, 209s up to 210, 393, well, your order's not upstairs and it's not being processed because it needs to be paid for. 
I would so appreciate it if you have a pay later order and you are in these blocks of numbers and you have not paid for it. I committed to you that I would get you this product for these prices. You committed to me that when the it was time to pay for them, you would. Please don't make it so that we're unable to offer pay laters to people next year. You know, that don't please just do me a favor and give us a call and say, "Oh my gosh, I've been crazy busy. There's been so much going on. Let me take care of that order. We're happy to take payment over the phone. We're happy to send you another PayPal invoice and you don't have to have PayPal to pay. You can use that invoice and just use your regular credit card. Whatever you need us to do, we will help you absolutely. But I've already paid for all of this merchandise in good faith for you. And I know that you're going to pay for it in good faith to me. Thank you in advance. <laughs> now, if you are order 210394 all the way up to probably 210500 or 210550 that's the next block of of numbers that we're going to be working on so your paypal invoices if you're a pay later will be coming to you soon if not already because we'll we'll start sending out those numbers as these orders are being fulfilled that way when these are all done we've got that whole chunk of of orders to take upstairs and start processing. Yay! I know people are so excited. We get emails, we get cards, we get thank you notes. I never would have been able to buy this much product for 50 bucks in my lifetime. So we're just we're just grateful that we're able to do this sale for you every year and we're grateful for your understanding and your patience during this sale and the terms of the sale and why it is the way it is. But okay, anyway, enough of that. Oh, what else? Okay, winner, winner, chicken dinner. I have two winner, winner, chicken dinners. We always give away two prizes and you, each winner gets a gift card to Scrapbooking Made Simple. How do you get to be a winner, winner, chicken dinner here? Well, you have to subscribe. There's an SMS button right there with a little, well, there's a heart with a little SMS in it. Just run your mouse over it and you will see a subscribe bar come up and click it. And then you can post a comment below. Once you leave that comment, it will be approved. So you just need to be kind, that's all. And then we'll approve your comment. And then you go into the running for a winner, winner, chicken dinner. And you never know when your name's gonna be called and you're gonna get a $25 gift card put into your online account. That is a wahoo ka -choo. I am so positive that there are lots of people out there who never thought I was gonna call their name. And then all of a sudden they hear it and they're like, ah! and they rewind the YouTube and they watch it again and they rewind the YouTube and then they call their family in to rewind the YouTube. So you want that excitement, don't you? I want that excitement for you, but if you don't post a comment, you can't ever win. That's the name of the game. <laughs> so our winner winners today, let me get onto that before we start going on. Again, I've got Memory Box for you. I've got Stampendous for you. I've got Sizzix for you. I've got Simply Defined for you. And this is a technique-based class. There is some very specific technique towards the end that you are going to want to either take notes for or definitely jot this YouTube number down. It may be things you didn't know you could do. Maybe, we'll have to see, right? <laughs> okay, our first winner, winner chicken dinner from YouTube number 393 is Jan. Oh, Jan, is it shower? Jan, is that it? Shower? Oh, please forgive me. I know I probably butchered your name, but really I know you you don't mind because you've got $25 coming your way to spend on anything that will make your heart happy. But you're not alone. We have our second winner winner chicken dinner. Barbara. I'm gonna guess the E is silent. Barbara Lamb. Hello, Barbara. How are you doing today? I bet you girls never thought I'd call your name ever. And now you're like, ah! And, and then you're like, hmm, what can I get? <laughs> well, that $25 is already in your account. Enjoy it. But of course, we have to do the winner, winner, chicken dinner dance. Are you ready? Okay. You're a winner. Chicken dinner. You're a winner. Chicken dinner. Wahoo. Kachu for you. Congratulations to the both of you. And again, if you don't leave a comment, you can't win. And if you're joining us during the premiere of the Saturday with Stacy YouTube class, which is every Saturday morning, 8 a.m. Sunday California time, that would be 11 a.m. in New York, 
we are live chatting over here and the live chat does not count as a comment to be a winner winner and yes you can be international absolutely and yes you don't have to have your proper name as your youtube username as long as we can figure out who you are that's important so all right, so today I have also Simply Botanical for you. I think I'm gonna tilt down. We're gonna get started for today. It's so good to see you, and I hope everybody's just having a really lovely weekend thus far, being that it's early. The weekend's just started, Woohoo! All right, I'm gonna tilt on down and we're gonna get started. Bye, everyone. See, not very sophisticated, I know. Let me zoom on in and kind of Mm -hmm. uh, zoom on in a little more, a little down. Got to get my tummy out of the way. All right. Pretty good? Yeah. Okay. So, sample number one, Simply Botanical. What's Simply Botanical? It is a die-in stamp set that is exclusive to Scrapbooking Made Simple because Simply Botanical is my brand. It is only one die-in stamp set a month. It's value priced at $14.39 and it is a co-brand so we have Spellbinders manufacture it for us. Why do we have Spellbinders manufacture it for us? Well we absolutely could do it ourselves there's no question about that but we believe in supporting the manufacturers who support us and so by pairing with them by co-branding with them well then they're part of the process and we're not stepping around them or on top of them or or behind them we're working with the partners who work with us and we appreciate it there's the stamp there's the die and then i had extra room so i included a smaller standalone die that looks like this right pretty huh isn't that lovely make my heart happy and then the last sample i have for you is again using the diane stamp together so fourteen dollars 39 cents it's once a month when they're gone they're gone and here's my expensive zoom that's me moving it in <laughs> i told you we're so low tech here i'm such a nerd but i embrace my nerdiness <laughs> Okay, so the three samples and the set, <laughs> when they're gone, they're gone. Simply Botanical, it, uh, <laughs> Simply Botanical April between Scrapbooking Made Simple and Spellbinders. Give it up for Spellbinders, everybody. We really appreciate them. Okay, I'm going to put that, I think, right there for now. Then I'm going to show you a couple samples before we get started of some of the product that we're going to be using today. Ooh, isn't that pretty? So this is a Simply Defined die. And again, Simply Defined is my brand. It's exclusive to Scrapbooking Made Simple. The only place you'll find it is here, and they are value priced. So I had that one to show you, and then I thought I'd show you this one. Mmm, pretty, right? love the frames and these dies really lent themselves to the Sizzix opulent paper i mean they really lent themselves to the Sizzix opulent paper so i got on the horn and said okay we need your opulent paper for this week because well i just do i didn't want to tell them that my girls when they got their samples of dies to start making cards with and, and layouts with that they all gravitated towards the opulent paper and i think i might show you this one too I didn't want to tell them that my girls gravitated to the paper, so I wanted to make sure we had plenty in stock that we could get it for you, and that I could do it for, well, on the main colors, $13.99 a pack for the gold, the silver, the charcoal, the ivory, and the rose gold. The mystical runs a little bit more, but that's okay. It's also on sale at 30% off. Now, this was Elena, and this was Doris, and this was... Claire. Okay, time to get started. We're going to start from the very beginning, and that's a really good place to start. I know, right? That was pretty terrible, a little cheesy of me. I'm going to grab a couple pieces of paper out of, this is the Mystical Cardstock Collection by Sizzix, and 
it coordinates with the mystical opulent paper pads and the paper pack from the mystical opulent has five different finishes 10 sheets each but this coordinates with the cardstock so since I'm using that today I'm going to use the cardstock too and let's just grab um, let's grab a pink and I really like the dark purple that's super pretty and I really like I think I like the light purple too in fact I got a little piece of the light purple cut right here let's try that and see how that works now my dies are let me bring them over there's six in the series they are full size a2 dies so this is a standard size for a card in here in the United States my girls have absolutely the SM, SMS girls have absolutely made larger cards we've got probably up to five by seven that they take and they mat and they make bigger cards with them you will find these dies this size a2 on the market from other manufacturers anywhere from about i don't know uh, anywhere from maybe 16 17 dollars all the way up i've seen them as high as 26 dollars for a die this size we sell them at an everyday low price of 13 dollars and 99 cents and then if you buy the i want it all they come down to nine dollars and 99 cents per die that's i mean that's a value price we're trying to keep crafting affordable here i'm not gonna not gonna retire off of it but you know what there's there's more things to that there's there's more important things keeping our hobby going is the most important thing to me keeping people crafting and giving them an outlet to enjoy and decompress is so important so this die here's the main die and you get the four layering dies to go with it right there and then here's the die and you get the seven circle dies and there it is and here's the leaf die and this is what it looks like so each one of them is distinctively different and yet they all kind of have a you know a good look and feel about them so that they're useful all year round Now, if you like one, like I said, they're $13.99 each. If you like them all, or if you like four, you might if you're gonna buy four, you might as well buy the I want it all. Because you're about the same price. <laughs> you might as well get the other two for free and you can give them away. Or maybe if you like a few and your friend likes a few, you guys can split them up and divvy them up. Because really at $10 a die, you can't do much better than that. Now again, I'm gonna start just simple. And I think I'm gonna start with this one. And I'm gonna pull, I already pulled cardstock. I'm gonna put my glasses on so I can see what we're doing. And I'm gonna use my main die here. So I've got a couple sheets of cardstock. I'm just gonna cut me off a little hunk of each and we're gonna get going all right so my dies are a wafer die they're a chemically etched die wafer thin that's how they get their name chemically etched because it's chemicals that do the etching they don't have a blade Chemically etched dies do not have a blade. They have these little ridges that when pressure is added, cuts through paper. Hard to believe, I know, because they don't hurt you. You can't hurt yourself with these dies, which is nice because they're child friendly. But my dies tend to be very intricate. Can you see all the cuts that this die has to make? It's got one big one that's easy peasy, but the rest of them are, well, very intricate. I'm going to bring my Sizzix Big Shot machine on over. This is a standard Sizzix Big Shot machine. It's six inches wide. And the new machines that you're going to be getting if you just order one is going to come with a standard base plate and a solo shim to go on top. 
it's also going to come with two clear plates. Mine are not clear anymore because I use them. <laughs> but yours will be crystal clear when you get them. Just know they won't stay that way. They're eventually going to look like this. And with the base plate and the shim and two clear plates, you're going to be able to cut almost every die out on the market. Absolutely. Even only being six inches wide, you will find that about 90% of the dies on the market are going to fit this six inches wide. My dies will actually fit, uh, obviously, a big kick and a big shot and a big shot Fabi and a big shot Vintage if you have it and a Vagabond and a Vagabond 2 and an Express and a Plus and a Pro, but they're also going to fit your Spellbinder machines and they're going to fit your Cuddlebug machines. And so, because you've got the width, it's only... Uh, it's only four inches wide, four and a quarter by five and a half. So it'll fit through your cuddle bug machine just fine. This is what you get when you buy your machine. This is how it comes. However, with dies that are more intricate like mine, like several on the market, even some uh, Sizzix dies now are very intricate. You need something called a precision base plate. And this does not come with the machine. This is a separate purchase. Well, until now, from us. <laughs> so if you already have the machine, but you don't have a precision base plate and you are trying to cut intricate dies, regardless of whose dies they are, whether they be mine or Spellbinders or Sizzix or Memory Box, whomever dies you're trying to cut and they're not cutting well, it's because you need one of these. This is what allows the die to bite into it and really make a good, clean cut. The Sizzix machine sells for $119.99 and this sells for, I think, $25. We've got the whole bundle for $109.99 plus shipping. I think it's $109.99. $109.99? $104.99? It's somewhere in there. I can't remember, but it's somewhere in there. So great value because it's $144 or $145 if it's not on sale. And this is really handy. You really, this is more of a need than it is a want. Now, if you have an older machine to cut and it's got the multi-purpose platform, you're just gonna keep that platform completely closed if this is the, the platform that you have. They still make this and sell this, but it no longer comes with the machine. They bring it out this way. And if you have a magnetic platform, this also was not sold with the machine. And the beauty of a magnetic platform is that you can take a die and it's paper and put it on and it doesn't move. That's the beauty of a magnetic platform. That's why people love it because if you've stamped a flower and then you've got the die to go around it, this allows you to keep it all in place without having to tape it down. But once you use your precision base plate on top of it, people will ask, can you use a magnetic platform with a precision base plate? Technically, yes. Yes, but you've now just made this magnetic platform just a regular old base plate because when you put your die back on it, it is no longer magnetized. The precision base plate takes that away. So really, you're not gaining yourself anything by using it. Ellison would prefer that you not use it, that you use it just with your regular shims and platforms, but I do want to let you know why. So can you? Yes. Does it give you any benefit? No. But if it's handy, can you roll it through? You can. So I'm going to use this as my bottom cut plate. Normally, like I said, I would just use, I would use two cut plates, sandwich through, send it on through and die cut. But because my die is intricate, I'm going to use my precision base plate as my bottom cut plate. And I really need you to not have the directions facing you. If you can read the directions, I need you to flip it over so that the metal is facing up, whether it be the chrome like I have or an older precision base plate that has a black metal on top of it. Whichever you have is going to work fine. Then I'm going to put my paper down and my die. Now typically my dies have a straight edge. They are for the most part rectangular and there's a straight edge here. There's a roller in this machine that when I put this clear plate back on, or what was a clear plate, and I send it through the machine, it's going to apply pressure to the die, and those little ridges that I showed you are going to cut out this beautiful shape. Really, it's that simple and amazing. But 
because this is a straight edge and it is parallel to that roller, when it feeds it through, it has to kind of grab this straight edge all at one time and it gives you a big kafunk. It doesn't harm your die and it doesn't harm your machine. But if you don't want to hear that, all you have to do is rotate your die a little bit. Just rotate your die so it feeds in at an angle. I'm going to put my, so I've got my, my base plate, my my solo shim on top, my precision base plate, metal facing up, my paper, my die, my clear plate, and I'm gonna send it on through. And this is gonna cut it beautifully. All right, there we go. Then I might do, I can take off my, take off my outer, Ooh, that's a good frame. I might save that. I'm gonna hold on to that. And I'm gonna do a quick little rotate, just to rotate, because every machine has got a sweet spot. You may have a Sizzix Big Shot machine and I have one, but my sweet spot is on the left side and yours is on the right side. If you're putting your die back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and not moving it, and it's still not cutting, that's because it's not hitting the roller in a new and unique way. You've got to move the die a little bit so that it has a chance to hit the roller differently. You will get a better cut doing that. You will be less frustrated. <laughs> Let's see what I got. Oh yeah, that looks pretty good. So that piece popped out easy peasy. Let's get my tweezers. Gosh, where'd my other pair of tweezers go? That'd be good to know. Hmm. Okay, well, we'll have to be careful not to lose my one. Usually I have two out here just in case. Okay, and then all my little doodads are just gonna start to fall out. That's what you want. You want all of these little pieces to fall out. And in fact, that's the name of these little pieces. They're called fallouts. Very technical, I know. I didn't come up with it. <laughs> So all of these little fallout pieces, giving you the design of the die. Now this is on 80 pound cardstock. Sizzix, their cardstock is 80 pound, which is typical for a lot of cardstock. Their cardstock is also a solid core cardstock. That means when I tear it, it's the same color all the way through. This paper has been dyed to this color. So it's the same color all the way through. And it makes a beautiful, a beautiful cut. But I do have lots of little doodads in here. Lots of little doodads. All right, well, I'm not gonna get, well, we'll just move along. I'm gonna put that, okay. If I need another one, I'll get another one. How am I gonna adhere this down? I'm gonna put this onto my darker purple really pretty right easiest way to do an intricate die and glue it down is not putting glue all over the back of it it is these things called sticky dots so these are my simply defined sticky dots it is a sheet of hundreds of thousands of little micro dots on there this side has nothing this side has adhesive hundreds of thousands of little micro little little micro dots i don't know if you can see them on my thumb little micro dots. So the easiest way to open it and close it, not my idea, is just to put some washi tape so you have some pulls. No, I cannot change the color of the dots. I can't. I tried. It's just out of my price point. We are not a big corporation and I just can't afford it. I'm sorry. I also can't change the color of the liner. The manufacturers will do it for me without question. It's just a matter of how much can I afford to pay and how many are they gonna make me order. And to do either of those changes, it is beyond my capability. My two children who, my sons who may end up taking over Scrapbooking Made Simple at some point, they would still be selling. <laughs> they would be retiring and still have some, some sticky dots left by the time we are sold through them because I would have to order so much. So anywhere there's no paper, the dots stay. So there's still lots of dots right there. Anywhere you don't see paper, the dots remain. Pick it up. 
and let's put it down. So I didn't get out all of my doodads, but that's okay. You're good with it. And then I can just trim it out. Now I know you guys would use a trimmer. I'm just freehanding. And I'm okay with that, so you're okay with that. There we go. Done. And you've made a beautiful die cut. And here's the put a picture in there for a layout. Here's the beginning of a card. Here's the beginning of something. But what about this piece right here? What more can you do with that piece? I've got a couple dies in this collection where you're able to paper piece things back. And that's where this darker pink is going to come into play. So I'm just going to cut a hack of it off and bring my die back on over. And you're going to say, but Stacy, the paper's not big enough. You're not going to get your whole cut. I don't want it. All I care about is this piece right here. Have you ever had a piece of paper where you wanted a specific, a specific design element out of it? You wanted to feature just that, or rice paper, or a napkin, where something was so pretty you wanted to die cut that element out? This is how you do it. Do I need to use my precision base plate with this? No, I don't. All I'm asking it to do, all I want the die to do, is cut this piece out, and that's a very simple cut. I don't need it to cut all the little leaves and goodies out. No, no, no. So I've got my die, I've got my, my base plate, my solo shim, my cut plate, my paper, my die, and then a do not cut plate white, blue, makes no difference. Just a plate that you try to keep as flat as possible and you try not to cut into it. It will leave little no, little indentations from the pressure of the die that you're using, but you're trying to not cut into it. It just allows the whole sandwich to go through your machine at a much smoother pace. You're not trying to wedge a warped platform underneath it. So I'm gonna send it on through. It really should only take one pass because all I'm asking it to do is cut that big old shape out. Let's see what I've got. Oh man, I didn't roll it all the way to the end. That's my mistake. I didn't take it all the way to the end of the of the machine. All right, let's do it again. This time I need to roll it all the way to the end. So the roller, the roller never touched here. Never got there. So let's do it again. Send it on through. And let's make sure I get it all the way to the end. Yes, and just for good measure, we'll bring it back. Done. Much better. Well, and I also cut some of this, but this I'm not caring about. I'm not asking it to cut it. And it really didn't. You can see down here, it didn't cut it at all. I really need the precision base plate to do that. But I do have this lovely piece, which then I can fit right back in there. Take my sticky dots. Gosh, I can almost see the big, oh yeah, I can see the big <laughs> where they were left from before. <laughs> oh yeah. <gasps> but I did the wrong side. Oh, okay. My day today. See, you see all the oopses, all the blub the blunders, the oh wells. <laughs> 
Important to put the sticky dots on the right side. <laughs> okay, there we go. Now what am I going to do? I'm going to roll them off. Put the sticky dots on the wrong side. If you have a, an eraser, because they haven't set yet, I'm just going to pretend that it never happened. <laughs> and poof! It's all better. Sticky dots are gone. I'm able to stamp on here or whatever makes my heart happy. I'd like to have an eraser, but that's okay. My fingers will do a good job. And done, like it never happened. But I paper pieced it right on in. Isn't that pretty? Easy to do, simple die cutting. But let's take it a little step further. And let's try with, let's try with a different die. Um, what do I want to use? Let's see. a whirl. And for this one, I'm going to use a different type of paper. I was using just 80 pound basic cardstock. Now I'm going to pull out the memory box paper, which is much heavier. So memory box has made these six by six blocks of cardstock. There's 48 sheets in each block. They're all done by hues. You get four of each color, so that's 12 colors. And they're beautiful. The girls have been going crazy. This isn't a full one. This is one that you can see has been, they've been into. Uh, the aqua is almost gone. Holy smokes, artichokes. I'll show you the full ones at the end. But the colors really are just magical. And they look so pretty. There's nine different blocks. So I'll show you all nine when we get to the end. But I think I'm going to take some of that, some of that violet. They're calling that violet. You even have browns and grays. This paper is different than the Sizzix paper. Let's just pull out a sheet. So pretty. This paper is different than the Sizzix paper. I'm going to take this and I'm going to trim this on down just a little bit just so it feeds through my machine easy peasy because the six inch width of the paper is that of my machine so I'm not going to be able to angle it if I leave it this way unless I angle the entire die and who knows I might use this for something. I am. I'm going to show you why this paper is different. So my Sizzix paper is solid core. Remember it's dyed. So it's pretty much the same color all the way through. My memory box paper is white core. What also makes this different? My memory box paper is 110 pound. My Sizzix paper is 80 pound. There is nothing wrong with 80 pound paper. Most papers on the market are 80 pound. For cardstock, I sell 100 pound in black and white. There's some manufacturers that carry 100 pound. Memory Box brought in 110 pound. That is super heavy and you can hear it. And you can probably see it. This one's much thinner. This feels like almost two of these put together. It's very heavy. Lovely paper to work with. Really, when I first brought it in, I brought in just a couple packs of each because I wasn't 100% sure. I wanted to see it. And then when I got it, I was like, holy smokes, artichokes. It's beautiful. So I'm going to die cut this out.
And yep, I'm gonna need my precision base plate, so let's get that down facing me. Get my die down, kind of twist it a little bit. And send it on through. Few little. Now you're going to feel more pressure when you send this on through. It's definitely tighter than the 80 pound paper, no question about it. Why is that? Well, 110 pound paper is much thicker. It's going to go through fine and it might make a few little noises, but that's okay. It's amazing that a single sheet of copy paper can make the difference of whether a die will cut or not. Sometimes you're having trouble with your die and you have to put a shim on top of it and a, just a single piece of copy paper. Ooh, this is good too. A single piece of copy paper will make the difference on whether a die will cut or not. Uh-huh. Then I can do, then I can do that. <laughs> I told you, <laughs> these rectangles are great. I'm not giving them up, but I do want to do a rotate. I'm going to rotate it and send it on back. Super quick. Okay. Tweezers, anybody? Tweezers. it out. A little bit of sticky. And all my odds and ends, all my little fallouts are coming right out. Beauty of a precision base plate, that's why you want it. And done. Now I think I'm going to take that one, I'm going to pop some of these bigger pieces out and I'm going to cut it in the 80 pound too because then we're going to sand it and I want you to see the difference. I'm just going to get some of these larger pieces out. And then run it through just some 80 pound paper. And I have the hot pink right here so we might as well just use that. machine over. It is really this fast. Send it through. This is an easier roll because the paper is not as heavy. Come on, there we go. Right at the end. And then let's do a twist. Ooh, look at that frame. That one's really good. Oh, okay, see, I digress, but I could trim this out and then put this around there. I almost don't even have to trim it. Okay, but really pretty. I'm not giving them my frames. I'm gonna do a twist and send it back and let's see what we get. This is the 80 pound paper from Sizzix. like it's a good cut. All the little pieces fall on out. That's always a happy moment. These dies have positive and negative aspects to them. So You've got some of the some of the die cut that goes into the actual frame of the die, giving you a positive and negative element to it. All right, I think we're good. 
Now let's gather up a little bit of my mess here. SMS Girl Doris says I average about 60% on whether I make it into the trash can or not with my little... Ha! I made it into the trash can, no problem. Now, what am I going to do with this? I'm going to try and sand both of these. I want you to see the difference. Sanding. Yes, this is a sand it gadget. It's by Coordinations. They are... Well, Coordinations is still in business. Well, I don't know who... Who owns them now to be quite on I think American Craft owns coordinations but they don't do the sanding block coordinations was sold to Doris Doris sold was sold to Michaels Michaels closed Doris <laughs> and Capitan uh, is it cat Pat Catan stores Pat Catan stores they're back east so these are no longer able to be found except I was online and I found a whole stash of them and they even come with the cleanup buddy. This little guy, so when you sand something, obviously it leaves some residue behind of the paper. This little cleanup buddy, which is huge, uh, this is just a portion of it, allows you to go in and pick up whether it be glitter or embossing powder or the powder, the paper powder that you make when you're sanding. I found these online and I bought all of them. I paid $6.99 for them. I paid full retail. You are going to pay $6.99. All I'm doing is paying it forward and passing them along because so many of you have asked where to find Sandit gadgets or you, you can go to the beauty supply, absolutely. But gosh, I really do love mine, I do. So if, there, if you need one and you want one, get one, but I have just a very limited amount of them. If they had a thousand of them, I would have bought a thousand of them, even at full retail, but they didn't. So I bought what I could get my hands on, had them shipped here and passing them along to you for the same price. Okay, memory box paper, white core. That means if I hit it with my, my sand it gadget, I can kind of distress it a little bit and that white is going to, I should not bend it, but that white's going to come right out. Maybe you want it to be a little shabby chic. A little shabby chic. Now remember, it's paper. If you keep sanding and sanding and sanding, well, you're going to sand it <laughs> right through the paper but really pretty, kind of shabby chic, without doing anything to it. You've just added a little more textural element to it. White core memory box, 110 pound paper. Or solid core paper, no matter whose solid core paper. I can sand and sand and sand. Oh, I just tore that one and sand and sand and it's not going to change because it's the same color all the way through. There's a big difference between the two. Double-sided paper, any double-sided paper, printed paper especially, is white core paper. The memory box paper is white core paper and it gives you so many options but we're not done. What if we wanted to take and use, where's my, use our dies as an embossing folder? What do you mean an embossing folder? What if I wanted to use my die as an embossing folder? Can't put it there, I'll lose it there. Let's try there for now. And let's see, what die do we want to take? I want to do this one. There are dies on the market, including mine, that have embossing full, embossing options where some of the cut, some of these lines don't have little ridges around them. Um, yeah, we'll use this one. Some of the lines will not have any ridges. They'll just have the opening, but no ridges for you to see. And you're like, why did they put that there? that's meant for you to use as an embossing feature so that when you cut it, you can then emboss it too and have that element 
be have that paper be pushed up into those negative spaces. All of the dies in this collection have cut lines around everything. Everything's supposed to fall out. So how do you make this an embossing element? Well, that's what we're gonna do. So I think I'll keep with my purple paper because I've got it right here. And I'm not going to cut the die out. We've been cutting dies out so far. That's what we've been doing is cutting the dies out. I'm going to emboss in. And the best way to do that is grab your Sizzix Big Shot machine. I'm not going to need my precision base plate because I'm not asking it to cut. I am not gonna need my solo shim because I am not asking it to cut. I'm asking it to emboss. That means I'm gonna need my squishy and my knock knock. These are Sizzix tools. They go for Sizzix machines, whether you have the Pro, the Plus, the Vagabond, the Fabby, the Vintage, the Big Kick, the Big Shot and they only make one size. So even if you have a plus machine, this is the size you're going to be using with your plus or pro machine. This is the squishy, AKA a silicone pad. And this is the knock knock, AKA uh, the textured impression pad. I renamed them squishy and knock knock because I did years ago and it's stuck and it is what it is. I'm gonna use these to emboss my die with even though there's no embossing feature. I'm gonna grab my more flat plate. I'm gonna put it straight down right on top of my, my base plate. And if you were using, if you were using your multi-purpose platform here, you would open to tab one and you would be doing everything I'm doing but on tab one and no, you cannot use your magnetic platform to make this work. This will not work with a magnetic platform. You either have to use your multi-purpose platform or the base plate that comes with the newer machines. So I've got my base plate down. I've got my clear plate down or my do not cut plate. I've got my die face up. Up until this point, we've been cutting down. Now I'm going to turn my die around and have it face up and then my paper on top. Then my squishy and my knock knock. I'm not gonna add another clear plate. If I do, it's too thick. It won't go through my machine. It literally will not go through. The machine says, no, try again. And as I send it through, that squishy, that silicone pad is going to get pushed into the die, causing it to make an impression without making a cut. And the way you know you're doing it right is if the, yeah, you hear creaks and cracks, that's okay. The squishy is going to start coming out the back end as the roller is compressing it down into that die. That's what this is meant to do. That's what it was designed for, and that's what you use it for. It is very, very rare that you will use a knock-knock without a squishy or a squishy without a knock knock. And then I have embossed into my paper. Hopefully you can see that. I have embossed into my paper. Let's do it with a piece of my memory box and let's just get that's a beautiful sheet 
Oh, let's get the pretty pink. Let's do pink. Look how pretty is that? It's kind of a rosy pink. See, having all these colors, there's the, there's the rub because I want to use this color and I want to use that color. So let's do the same thing super fast, only this time I'm going to use my memory box. That way we have one with the 80 pound and we'll have one with the 110 pound. We'll have one with the solid core paper and we'll have one with the white core paper. Now I didn't cut this paper down because I'm not asking it to cut. So it doesn't need to rotate or it's gonna go through pretty easy peasy. Make sure I've got my sandwich just so. Bring over my machine and send it through. And again, you know you're doing it right. If the squishy comes out, all you gotta do is remember squishy's gotta come out the back end. <laughs> okay, <laughs> just go with me on that. <laughs> and here it is. Now, you might be looking at this and going, oh, but Stacy, look at it, it tore the paper. It cut the paper a little bit, it cracked the paper, well, it cracked the paper more than anything else. It did, and can I resolve that? If I had sprayed it with a little bit of water before I ran it through, it would loosen the fibers of the paper, but I'm gonna sand it, so I'm gonna just be okay. And I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna sand it, just like we did And you'll see the white coming through. There we go. That was annoying me. <laughs> and it's okay. has two sides and you've got another one on this side. Paper has two sides. You have a whole nother look on this side. What happens if we sand this side? This is actually the back side. The side that you would think you would take down to whatever it is you're wanting to take down. Side of paper. Hello, the ninth wonder of the world. <laughs> the eighth wonder of the world is Schweitzer Falls over at uh, Disneyland <laughs> because you do the backside of water. <laughs> so here's the ninth wonder of the world, the backside of paper. Maybe you like this. Maybe this is the side you prefer. Maybe this is the side you prefer. Isn't it nice you have options you can choose? Because whatever side you choose, I'm gonna leave a little bit of the pink, just a little bit of the pink around it. Whatever side you choose, the other one is going to get taped down The other side's gonna get taped down to your, your backing, your cardstock. So this is Stacy tape and I don't have to use, I don't have to use my sticky dots because this is a solid piece of paper. So I'm gonna choose to not use 
this side. I'm going to choose to flip my paper over and use that side. So let's tape it on down. You would do a better job at taping than I am. And please know that double stick tape is not all the same. Mine's a little bit stronger, a little bit longer than most, but if you are using Score Pal tape, which is Suk Wang, or Elizabeth Craft tape, I have high confidence in both of those companies. However, if you're using something, something from the Dollar Tree and you're hoping that it's gonna stick and stay stuck, I can make no promises. Sometimes you just have to, well, thankfully it's my, my Stacy tape isn't very expensive, but sometimes you just have to bite the bullet and buy better product, especially when you're talking about adhesive. How pretty is that? Right? And easy, easy to do. Let's do one more like that. So I'm gonna use, I'm not gonna use the 80 pound because you see, it will emboss, but it doesn't give you much more than that. I'm gonna do it one more time, only with my 110 pound, and let's pull a couple colors. Let's get my dies in order here. Let's pull a couple colors, um, and maybe we go into the aquas, because that was awful pretty or maybe a pale blue. Pale blue. And um, maybe a really bright orange. Okay, so I'm gonna roll these through super quick, just like you would be doing it at home. It goes as fast as this always takes longer when somebody's teaching you, but when you get home and you get to do it on your own, it's bing, bang, boom. So, face up. Paper. Squishy. Knock, knock. send it through. Rolls through like a gem and my squishy's coming out the back end. One pass is all you need. And bam. Done. You can always tell the side it's cracked more. So let's go ahead. Let's do it with the blue. Same thing. Wash, rinse, and repeat. Squishy, knock, knock. So if you've got dies, how many dies do you own that all of a sudden now you're thinking, I could use those as embossing. I don't have to cut if I don't want to. Even if they don't have an embossing feature on them, I don't have to cut if I don't want to. No, no you don't. These dies are multi-purpose. You have options, use them. You've paid for the dies. Take advantage of everything they have to offer you. And don't be afraid. So. There's the front side. the back side.
There's the front side. Same die. There's the back side of paper. I could do the back side of this one. I want to make sure I don't transfer my orange. being overly gentle. This is 110 pound paper. It can take it, people. Clean up cloth. Get rid of all of that dust. Here's the back side. What do you like better? You get to choose. Front side. Backside. Pretty rock star, I think, because you're taking paper and using a die that it wasn't even meant to emboss. You're envisioning a whole new way to use tools that you already own. And dies and stamps and stencils, those are tools. Those are things that will stay in your arsenal forever and ever and ever. Ink, ink may come and go. Yes, that's more of a consumable. Paper comes and goes. But your dyes and your stamps and your stencils, your tools. Well, anytime you can figure out a new way to utilize them to your benefit, you've just, you've just added to how important they are to your stash. Now, can I ink this? I can. Um, I can take some Memento ink and it's going to kind of be a mishmash of color. You know, it's not going to be exact because it's all based on pressure, but I can absolutely take and drag some ink over the top. Let's do the back side. So again, it becomes what is your preference? What do you like more? Let's trim this out. That way you can get a better feel. What do you like more? And I'm gonna leave just a very fine line of that blue. Ooh. <laughs> Maybe you just liked it sanded. Well, let's trim this one out too. Just so we're looking at the same thing. So if the only thing you take from this class is that paper has two sides, and what makes the difference between papers being a solid core paper, a white core a paper, there's even color core paper, but that's super hard to find now. So inked, not inked, I don't know. 
I'll be honest, I'm meh about this side. It does not like make me float my boat, but I turn it over and I am so wahoo could chew about this side. I love it inked. I love it. I love it inked. I love it sanded. And I love just the die cut. <laughs> it's a super pretty die. <laughs> super pretty die. Okay, move on. So we have seen the difference between 80 pound solid core versus 110 or any white core paper that it can be sanded. You've seen how to basic die cut. Now you've seen how to take a die that does not have an embossing feature and give it an embossing feature and then color it if you want. Absolutely. Let's move on to, oh, and we did these over here. So pretty. Let's move on to opulent paper. Let's talk a little bit about opulent paper because that's a whole different paper than any of these. Opulent paper is by Sizzix and they have five different, well, six different packs of it actually. They have the gold. It's beautiful paper. The girls gravitated to this immediately when they started playing with my frames. They, they have the gold, they have rose gold, they have, let's see, they have charcoal. So five different specialty finishes, 10 sheets each, a total of 50 sheets, and they'll be on sale for $13.99. We have the rose gold. We have the ivory, but let's just be clear. Ivory is white. If you think you're going to get ivory paper, you're not. You're going to get white paper. Why they called it ivory, I do not know. But five different finishes, a glitter finish, a pearl finish. They all have um, the mirror finish. They're beautiful. And then the silver. Let's see if I can grab that. Silver. So these are the five basic colors that they have. 50 sheets, 10 of each sheet. They all have a glitter, they all have a satin or a pearly. They all they have like a metal finish. Really beautiful. And I almost think opulent paper is a need and not a want because we use it so often. I'm gonna take I'm going to take hmm, Well, I want to cut just a basic one. So I'm going to cut just a basic die with opulent paper just so you can see it. So I'm going to use the same die that I did this one with. And I think I'm going to grab I'm going to grab Okay, I love this. Love that. And dark. Do I want it? Ooh, ooh. Do I want it that way or that? No, we'll go this way. Okay, so I'm going to cut a sheet of this off, just a hunk of it. It is a specialty paper, so you need to look at the back of your opulent and see, is it white core on the back or is it more, or is it double-sided? That's gonna tell you a little bit about the paper. This is white core if I tear it, but they've printed this beautiful rose gold on both sides. This is white on the back, which means they've layered on this satin finish. So let's cut it out and see how pretty it can be. Put it over there. Anybody seen my tweezers? Oh, there they are. 
Makes me nervous that I only have one pair. <laughs> I know there's got to be another pair here somewhere. All right, let's bring our machine over. I'm not going to be embossing with it right now. We will get there, and there is a special technique. But I am going to die cut. So that means I need my solo shim back. That means I need my precision base plate back. That means I'm going to put my paper in my die. And I'm going to trim this. If I trim this, I might end up with a super cool frame that I can use at a later date. I'm going to rotate it just a little bit just so that I am not parallel to the roller in my machine. So just give it a little twist. Put my, see, and you can see my plate warping. I could go back and forth and back and forth and try to get it to unwarp. We'll see. And send it on through. Oh, I am off. My plate is not straight at all. There we go. Let's try that again. I could feel how tight that was and knew that my plates were not straight. Oh yeah, see, that's better. See, look at how easy peasy that is. Much better. And then let's rotate it. So I can take the frame. The frame's gonna come right off. And now I can rotate. Well, actually my little things are gonna pop out too rotate it this way and send it back and see what we've got oh, he's still my heart All my little bits and pieces come out. And it's in this beautiful, beautiful satiny color. And then let's take bring over my sticky dots, open it up, make sure I've got my, <laughs> my die cut going with sticky dots on the right side, but you did see how I just, oh, I've got tons of them over there too. You did see how I just rubbed them off when I made my oops. That's how you know we don't edit. I don't know how to edit. I don't want to learn how to edit. You get to see my flubs and blunders because we all do it. This is this is crafting. This is handmade. This is not machine. This is not precise. This is this is us being us. It's it's my attempt at my own art that I hopefully give to people who appreciate it. And let's map. Anything that you make is your art. Whether you be a fine artist or a hobbyist, they, they call crafters. They, you know, we're kind of on the kind of downslope of, of what people think of as art. But you, know, you talk to some of the companies that I do business with and they don't want to talk to me because I'm a paper crafting store. Well, yeah, I'm a paper crafting store and I want to use the best product I can use for my paper crafting. And sometimes that's fine art supplies. I don't care that I'm not a fine artist. I just want to use really good product. <laughs> Ooh. What do you think? Just die cutting. That's with opulent paper. It's beautiful. It is, it's beautiful. But opulent paper also comes in the mystical. And the mystical has 
these ombre sheets. There's two different sheets that are ombre. This one's just a boatload of happiness. And then they've got one behind it that is a high gloss with pink and white and iridescence. So you get five different, five different types of paper in here, specialty paper. I think I'm gonna cut the ombre. Five different types of specialty paper, but this one runs more than the $19.99, so it'll be more than $13.99, but we'll still do it at the 30% off. And it coordinates beautifully with the cardstock that they did. They did the pack of cardstock just for this collection, so that'll also be at the 30% off. So I'm gonna cut the ombre, and I think I'm gonna use this die here just so you can see how the ombre looks and then are we going to emboss this yes but there's a technique to it and you have to see how to do it it's not the way we've been doing it mm -mm. it's a wee bit different but i want to cut i want you to see how beautiful the ombre is Okay, so I'm gonna bring this over and bring my machine over. This is a whole nother die. I think I have maybe used almost all the dies in the, almost all the dies in the pack so far. And I'm gonna do a slight rotate and I'm gonna send it on through. Easy peasy mac and cheesy. If you are lucky enough to have a push button machine, well then this is just going to go through like butter. Push button machines are very handy if you have arthritis or anything like that. Oh, I'm not going to throw that away. That's a great frame. That's a great frame. In fact, that is such a great frame. that that frame that frame would look good on here <laughs> all right I'm gonna do my rotate <laughs> so push button machines electric machines are very nice because if you have arthritis or problems with your hands then you still are able to die cut. Manual machines are nice because you can feel it going through. You know if it's cutting, you know how well it's doing, and you don't have to worry about the power and whether you've got a power source or if the electricity has gone off. So there's a pro and con to both of them. You gotta decide for yourself which is the one you need the most. A manual machine is always going to be less money than a electronic machine. Now, if they had an electronic machine that could be manual when it needed to be manual and electronic when you wanted it to be electronic, so if the power went out, and you could still craft. Yes, we craft in the dark, no judgment. <laughs> but when the power came back on, ooh, isn't that a good idea? Okay, this is a beautiful die. Love this. Let's back this with something. Let's grab... Let's grab, ooh, let's grab this white. So this is the pearly white. It's not ivory. It's definitely white from the ivory opulent pack. Look at how beautiful that is. Okay, let's grab some sticky dots because I'm going to need them to put this down. Better just to use the sticky dots. It makes your life so much easier. And anybody you talk to who has used sticky dots will tell you they just, they change you no longer look at your intricate, intricate dies and go, uh, how am I going to be able to get them down on my paper? Mm -mm. All of a sudden, everything is a whole new world. Can you use a Xyron? Yes, absolutely. Xyron is a little bit more money than these. Yes, a little bit more money, and they give you more goobers. You know what a goober is? Were you a kid? because if you were a kid at some point, you probably had a goober on your hand. So Xyrons tend to give you more goobers and 
cost a little more and of course you have to have the larger size Xyron machine to get the larger width where mine are just sheets and then let's trim that out It's a straight cut, but I'm a little wide. Isn't that a shame? That's a perfect little cut right there. But I'm a little wide. Okay, no judgment on my wide. <laughs> Gosh, when I was in my 20s, hooey! I'm in my 50s now, and well, the hooey is gone, and the oh well has <laughs> set in. <laughs> I've been married almost 26 years. I love my husband and he loves me just the way we are. And what if I put that? If I put that there. Look at how beautiful it is. This is beautiful. The Mystical paper is gorgeous. That ombre is gorgeous. So let's just tape that down in place just so I have it. And now let's play with trying to emboss them just like we were doing earlier. ready to go. Mat it, stamp it, done. <laughs> In fact, maybe I will stamp that one. Huh. Gosh, I could stamp this one and this one. You know what? I'm going to put these off to the side and maybe even this one. I think I'm going to hold those and we'll stamp those before we're done because we've got the Stampenda stamps. So now let's talk about running it through as an embossing like we've been doing. And I'm gonna pull my last die to do that with. And I think I'm gonna pull some gold. I'm gonna pull some mirror gold and maybe some satin gold. Two totally different golds, but both in the same pack. Variety, that's what we like, variety. And really good prices. All right, so I'm going to emboss this one. So I'm gonna trim my paper down a little bit to give me more of a nice fit in my machine. And then I'm gonna run it through. And this is white on the back. This one is not. It's still white core cardstock. Still white core cardstock. But this was layered on while this is some kind of a mylar that is put on, which means they're only going to put it on the front, not the back. This one's less expensive to manufacture. So they do both sides and the process is different. They wanted this beautiful sateen finish on this gold and they got that from inking, like layering the paper. Here they wanted that beautiful mirror and the only way to get that is, I oh gosh, I wonder if I can even take a piece of it and show you. So it's, it's hard to rip and it's almost like a, it's a foil. Can I get a piece of it? Don't know if I can get a piece to tear so you can see, but it's definitely a foil or a mylar that's on here. There's silver on the back of it. So my guess is if you took alcohol ink to this, it might take that gold off, but it's definitely not, it's not an inked paper like the memory box. It, it's not, 
it's not where they've laid ink down on the top and ink down on the bottom. The mirror or anything that has a white backing is usually some kind of a foil, a mylar, or something on the top. And if it's double, always give a little tear to see if it is a white core or if it's a solid core. So you see it's white. You know that that's sandable. Let's go ahead and let's die cut. So I guess I'm going to do this one first and I'm going to emboss. So I don't need my precision base plate. I don't need my solo shim. I do need a more flat plate if I can get myself to get one there, a nice flat plate. And my die facing up. I need those ridges facing me and the paper because it's two-sided. Doesn't matter which way I put it. And then my squishy and my knock-knock. And I'm going to send it through. You're saying, Stacy, this is the same. You haven't changed anything in the process. Wait, it's coming. We're building up to it. And the more you see this done, the easier it will be for you to remember. Okay. Aww. I must have had a, a wrinkle in my folder, but that's okay. Look at how pretty is that. Now, can I sand this? Yes. Yes, I can. You saw it was white when I tore it. It's white core cardstock. So I can get my sander out. What you need to know is because this is metallic and not just paper, it's paper with a metallic over the top, not a regular ink, a metallic ink over the top, it is going to take you a little more time and a little more effort to sand because you're trying to sand off a metallic. Absolutely. Look at the mess. See, that's where your little cleanup cloth comes into play. Will it sand? Yes. It's just going to take you a little more time and a little more effort to get it done. So there's a start on my sanding. But I have the back side too. I have both sides. I have two sides. Which side would you prefer to sand? It's up to you. Oh, that one I tore. It's just going to take time. So this was the back side of the paper. That gives me more of the detail. And this was your typical top side of the paper. So you have to decide which you like more. Can you ink these? Yes, you can. Can you use a memento ink? No, not really. A memento ink on this paper, because it's metallic, is going to It will dry. It will just take time to dry. So what ink do you want to use? For this paper, you definitely want to use your Hero Hues India ink. That's your go-to. So much um, more forgiving and dries so much faster. So my Hero Hues is almost dry. 
my India ink is not sm gonna smudge. It just doesn't, it dries faster than a memento. It's an India ink, it's a different type of ink. The memento will dry, you just have to give it some time. It will dry, not as fast as the India ink. So if I went over this, oh, let's see, what's the worst that can happen, right? And then I, well, do I want to do the back side? So here I've done this side. To bring out the embossing. Remember, this is supposed to be a die cut. I could do this side as well. And you're going to get a totally different look. I'm not going to worry about me having ink inside that rectangle. I'm not going to worry about having ink in there because the dye comes, you can put, you can mat something in there and cover that up. But do you prefer that? Or do you prefer that? Beautiful thing is you don't have to choose, you can have it both. Whichever side you don't like, you tape down. We took a die that makes a beautiful cut and we've now made it into a beautiful embossing folder. Even though it doesn't have embossing elements built into the die. So are we happy there? Or are we happy there? You choose. Let's do it on, how am I gonna get this up? Well, I'm gonna quickly get a piece of paper, a baby wipe, and my hand sanitizer. Here's my turbo bottle, the best bottle I have ever used in my life. It even has a little lock, so it doesn't spritz. I fill mine up, I have one for water and I have one for alcohol, which is actually Marabou hand sanitizer. And bam, isn't that nice, right? Yay. Okay, now let's do it in the gold gold that I cut because there is a different technique to get this done. It is single sided. Everything we've been doing so far has been double sided. All the paper we've used so far has been double-sided. Even, even just the basic cardstock that we were playing with from Sizzix. Cardstock's two-sided. The, the memory box is double-sided. What happens when you're working with a single-sided piece of paper? In fact, I'm going to cut this one twice too. I'm going to emboss this one twice just so you can see both ways and then you can make a decision. Okay, bring my die over. I'm just going to keep with the same one I've been using. I'm going to run it through twice, get it done super fast, easy peasy. Die face up with the ridges. The first way I'm going to do it is how we've been doing it, with the pretty side of the paper face down. So far it's been double-sided, so it hasn't mattered 
face up, face down. You've been able to decide, you know, you know it, it makes no difference. They're the same color on both sides. This time I am choosing to put the mirror side, the pretty side, face down. And then I've got my squishy. Sizzix would really appreciate it if I didn't call it squishy anymore, but I've been calling it squishy for so many years that I think they should rename their silicone impression, their silicone pad and their textured impression pad to squishy and knock knock. I say, <laughs> I say we, we rename it, rename it. <laughs> I'm going to get an email for that. <laughs> <laughs> See, but that's the beauty of my YouTubes. Nobody can pay me to do a YouTube. Manufacturers, they can't pay me to do it. Uh, this is, they're my classes. They're what I want to do when I want to do them. I'm not sponsored. I'm not paid. I, it, it is what it is. And so they don't get to, they don't get to tell me what I can and cannot say. Oh, isn't that beautiful? So that was face down. Now let's reverse it. Let's put the pretty paper face up because remember it's single sided. So let's put the white against and my knock knock and my squishy. I think sometimes they would really prefer to just pay me so that they could tell me what I can and cannot say. <laughs> I like our manufacturers. I just like to give them gentle, gentle suggestions every now and then. Look at Squishy's coming out my back end. <laughs> Who would have ever thought that my back ends would ever look so good? <laughs> well, when I was 20, my back end probably looked really good. <laughs> but now <laughs> we're talking about my dye. <laughs> see what we've got here okay so this was with the paper down this was with the paper up got a little bit of a bend I think I have a little bit of a, um, a mark in my plate but that's okay let's see the difference I'm not gonna sand this I am gonna take ink and ink over the top of it but I can't use my Hero, uh, my Hero Arts India ink and I cannot use my Memento ink. No, this is definitely non-porous. This, this still had some porosity to it where I could use that India ink and it would dry really quickly, whereas the Memento kind of smudged on it. This I could kind of get away with. And if I was doing just paper, you saw I used memento ink on this one without any problem. But this is a horse of a different color and you have to use the right ink for the right paper. These are all black inks, but they do totally different things. I think for every crafter, you need to have a good black dye based ink. We like memento. You need to have in India ink because India ink does things that other inks will not allow you to do. You only need it in black, that's it. And then you need a black stays on because stays on is exactly what it says. It stays on. It's a permanent ink. So this one was with, I need to, the one that I cut the corner was the one where I had the white going down. And this one was with the white up. All right, let's just take my stays on and let's see what we get. And then I will leave it to you to choose. But because it is white paper or white core or the white backed paper, single sided paper, you have to flip the paper depending on what you like, you want the look to be. You can't just flip the paper over and sand it both sides like we were doing. You can't, you got white on one side. So you have to move, you have to use the paper and flip the paper.
All right, I think I'm pretty good. Now, stays on is a little sticky sometimes. It'll take a moment for it to dry, and while that one's drying, let's do this one. This one is the, the opposite, the reverse. All right, now let's cut them out. And see which one you like better. The good news is you don't have to choose. You can do one this way and then the very next one, you change it up. You just have to remember, single-sided paper, it's how you put the paper that will determine what the final look is of your embossing. All right, so we have this one where you almost see, you just see a little bit of the gold peeking in from underneath the black. It's very elegant. You've got your gold here. I can mat and mask. It's beautiful. It's very, very elegant. Or you have the reverse where you see more of the gold and the black is just clinging to the lines. Which one works for you? They're the same, but different. You choose. They're beautiful. They're easy. <laughs> I mean, they're really, really, really easy to do. And then you can take it and you can mat them on whatever you want. The opulent has the most beautiful glitter papers. You decide what you want it to look like. I think I do like it on that glitter. What about on the... You mat it how you want it. But you have options when you use the right ink with the right paper. And remember, single-sided paper. Run one through down and one run one through up. And then ink both of them, or don't ink them at all. You're still gonna have two different looks because it's taking an embossed and a debossed. So pretty. All right, and then stamping. So let me grab some stamps. We have the Stampendous stamps from last week. They were actually meant for this week. We've got three different sets for you, um, and they all are beautiful. They're Franz sets. They all have great sentiments to them. This one is, May you touch dragonflies and stars, dance with fairies, and talk to the moon. I just, I love them. They're simple from happy birthday to count your age by friends, not years, to listen to dragonflies, they whisper have faith, to if I had a flower for every time I thought of you, I could walk in my garden forever, and something just as simple as start each day with a song, thank you from the bottom of my heart, in my imaginary neighborhood, you'd live right next door. I mean, these are just nice sayings. But again, you're back to paper and ink and what paper and what ink do you use and that's an important element to this let's pull this one that's an important element to this so if i'm using 
just plain paper. Plain paper. I can absolutely just use Memento ink or your Tim Holtz ink or your Stampin' Up ink or your Hero Hughes inks. What do you have? Plain paper, no worries. And one, two, three, A, B, C, and up I go. And it's dry. Dry, done, memento on paper. It's meant for paper, absolutely. Maybe I wanna see what it's gonna look like on this side. One, two, three, A, B, C. That probably wasn't very centered, but that's okay. And then I've got a little, some of the sets, all the sets have little extras to it. This one's a little butterfly. Put a little couple butterflies dancing. Memento ink on paper, perfect. But on the satin, remember when I put the opulent satin paper here? Memento ink is going to take longer to dry, just like it did on the gold satin when I was able to schmooze it. I was able to schmooze it. It will dry, it will just take more time. Instead, the India ink works best. Gosh, you know what? I'm not, I'm not even gonna, well, all right, I'll bother. And let's grab a piece of paper towel. Okay, clean. And let's grab my India ink. Ooh. Oh, that one's not gonna fit. Expand your wings, learn new things, fly as high as you can. Okay. Oh. Friends, different flowers from the same garden. Oh, I like that one too. All right, well, I'm just going to put it on the back of this one. So India ink is going to stain your stamp without question. It's gonna stain your stamp. My stamp, no matter what I do, is now gonna be black. I'm okay with that, because then I can actually read what it says. <laughs> Makes it a little easier for me. And let's just go. One, two, three, A, B, C, and up. And there's my India ink. And we're dry. It's important. India ink will dry faster on the, the shimmer paper, which is a double-sided paper, but white core, unlike, and then let's add a few little butterflies to this one too. Okay, there we go, done. These are different than, oh, see here, this one too. So this one had a white core back, remember? Find the back of it and look. See, white core. That's gonna tell me that I'm probably gonna to wanna to use a stays on with that because it looks like it's more of a coated paper than something they've, they've sprayed the color on to. So now stays on, will that fit? Yes. Stays 
stays on is what I'm going to want to use. Pull it off. And there you go. Different papers, different inks. It's important to remember that. Different papers, different inks. And then this one, will my Oh, nope, too big. All right, we'll stick with what we've got. Stays on. Oh, what if I have a big happy birthday? I have a happy birthday that might fit. I do. Stays on is also going to stain your stamp. Can you clean it? You can, you can get a solvent cleaner. Do I recommend it? Not really, just let it be. It's okay, it's not gonna harm your stamps. The solvent cleaner will harm your stamps. Maybe, what do I have, what's this one? Have a fantastic day. Happy birthday, looks so small there. But all right, we'll just do it. A solvent cleaner on clear stamps can, if you leave it too long, eat away at the stamp. And your stamps should last you a lifetime. One, two, three, A, B, C, and up. So there's my happy birthday. Different inks for different type papers. Three different inks, actually. But if you have each of them, then you've really got all you need, especially just in black. All right, we have done an awful lot here today, a ton. Oh, and I wanted to stamp this one too, because I've got some bigger sayings in here, like this one. If all our todays and tomorrows, in all our todays and tomorrows, what, whatever we say or do, it's friendship that makes the difference. It's friendship that sees us through. Oh, I love that. Fran is so good with her sentiments. Honestly, she is. And since I'm doing this on just paper, I can get away with just using memento. Ink up. I think I'm gonna do a quick stamp off because I haven't used this stamp yet. How about we stamp here? Ready? One, two, three, A, B, C. Okay, whoa, now let's try. Let's ink it again and give it a whirl. So did you learn that paper has two sides? And just by flipping it over, you may give yourself a whole new opportunity. One, two, three, A, B, C, and up. Oh, <laughs> I love it. And it's done. You're good to go. Somebody's gonna love that card. Okay, so like I said, we did a whole lot here today. We use dyes in ways that you might not have thought. We learned that backside, my backsides are pretty good. <laughs> the front sides, you if you like that better, okay. I'm more partial to the backsides on some of these. And the differences between paper and how to take in a, a die that is not meant to be an embossing die. I make it an embossing folder. Why not? Absolutely. You have options. Use them. You paid for them, you bought them. Well, not these, not yet. Okay, so I'm gonna show you all the things that are on sale. First off, we'll have the dew drop, the, because we can't get this in any smaller size, and the stays on midi, and the black on sale. And we have the exclusive on the India ink refill. Hero Arts did this just for us. 
We're the only ones to have it right now. So if you already have the ink pad, you should get the refill. And if you don't, you should get both. They'll be on sale. Then I've got the Sanda Gadget with the Buddy. Again, I'm passing it on to you for the price I paid for them. So it's no harm, no foul. It's from one friend to another. For those of you who have had trouble finding this, it's just from, from me to you because I know so many of you ask and I stumbled across them online and I bought every last one. I think this company thought I was probably a little bit crazy, but that won't be the first or the last time that's thought of me. <laughs> I have the Simply Botanical for April. One and done, value priced at $14.39. And they're designed by me and they are manufactured by Spellbinders as a partnership and creativity. I have got the stamps from Stampendous, all three sentiments. These are the same ones that were last week. So if you saw them last week and got them last week, you don't have to get them today. I am so sorry, but this is gonna drive me crazy. So we are just gonna take care of this right now. All right, that's a little better. That'll get me through until the until I can go clean it. That was gonna drive me crazy. All right, what else do we have for you? We have the squishy and the knock knock. If you don't have a squishy and a knock knock, you really need to get yourself a squishy and a knock knock. Absolutely. I want to say they're fourteen dollars for the two of them, and then they're on sale at twenty percent off. And if you don't have a die cutting machine yet, well, we've got the die cutting bundle for you with the precision base plate so that you are ready to go once you receive it. And if you don't have a precision base plate, but you do have a Sizzix machine, uh, then we'll have this on sale for you as well. So that's from Sizzix. Then we have the opulent paper packs at 30% off. So I wanna say this one's $26.99 and then 30% off. And this one's like $16.99, I wanna say, and 30% off. And then the regular colors, the gold and the silver and the rose gold and all the colors I was playing with are $19.99 and they will be 30% off. So all of the Sizzix beautiful paper for you on sale. Can I grab the last one? Oh, yes, yes I can. But we've had this before. This is not new. What is new is the memory box paper. Oh, so pretty. I mean, it's beautiful. These are the full packs. Six by six, 110 pound weight. This is rock star. Not many companies do 110 pound in all of these colors. And I love that it's all put together in one pad. You just reach for it and start making up your, your tone on tones. And upcoming is the Aqua, which got used, I think, more than any other paper pad. But look at the colors. It die cuts, it embosses, it'll go through your embossing folder, absolutely. Oh, my stack's getting very tall here. There's the blue. The green. The browns and grays. And the yellow. Well, oranges and yellows. Okay, then last but not least, we have my dies. So I'm just gonna show you the storyboards for them because I think I used every one of them today. So you get the full size die, A2 size, and then you get four dies. And you could frame these into each other and make frames. I mean, there's tons to be done with them. 
but that's $13.99 if you just want the one, or if you get the I want it all, they're $9.99. So you get everything you see for the $13.99, or if you get the bundle. Now some people would pay $13.99 just for the circles, but you get the die too. So the only way you'll see it for the $9.99 is the full price of the I Want It All is $59.99. If you're going to buy four of these, you might as well get the I Want It All. You might as well get the other two dies. Save you money. Even if you use them as a gift or if your friend likes three and you like three, divvy them up. They're value priced to keep crafting affordable. All right. I think that's all. Let's do samples. Let's start with uh, let's start with a pile of samples that everybody made. And I've got three layouts for you. So this is the memory box paper. Almost everything here was done with memory box paper with Sizzix opulent paper and sometimes they used my satin paper but a lot of that is here. Look at this is all done in the opulent paper. And the sentiments from Stampendous. And remember, this was the very first one I did. Remember this one? See, they had a specific thing they wanted to cut out and they layered it right back on in. And they used the Sizzix Mystical Opulent Paper for the, well, for both. It looks like for the background and for the die cut and the Spellbinder Sentiment. See? Ooh! <laughs> and then look at this. They made my leaf one actually seaweed or sea kelp. <laughs> look at that. You've got Stella the, Stella the sea turtle going, <laughs> isn't that darling? It's all in how you see things. And here, this one is also used with the mystical opulent. Look at how pretty is that. And simple and basic and done. And bigger than, this is a five by seven card. This is bigger than an A2 card. You can see that the girls, they like bigger cards too. Look at this one, also bigger. And this one was used with the embossing and luster wax from Sizzix and the Stampenda sentiment at the bottom. And they made bigger cards. This one is also bigger than an A2 card. And also used Sizzix luster wax that we've had. And, oh, so pretty. And the opulent paper in the background and the opulent paper down here and the Stampenda sentiment there. And then let's see, these are Elena. So I already showed you this one earlier. And she took the dies, the rectangle dies, and nested the cuts so that it popped. And here you have Elena using the rose gold and the gold opulent paper. So you've got the rose gold on top and the gold underneath. And Elena used the rose gold and the charcoal opulent paper, and she layered the rose gold design, the die cut right on, just a little askew from the charcoal, just so you had both of them coming through, and then the paper underneath. These are Elena's. Oh, Elena, this one's beautiful. Here she's used the rose gold opulent paper and she's used the ivory glitter paper from the ivory pack, which is really white. How beautiful is that, right? It's just soft. And look at her wedding. Same thing, she likes to offset and layer. So she's got the matte gold that we were using and she's got the mirror silver and she slightly offset them. So you get just a little bit of a shadowy effect. These are all Elena, and Elena does the storyboards for us as well. So she does all the storyboards. And once again, the she's taken the mat on top of the mirror to give that depth and perception of that die a little bit more than what it was just on its own. 
So that's all Elena. Then we have Belinda. I've got a couple in from Belinda. <laughs> all right, I'm going to show you this one first. I love her second one. I love her first one, but her second one's just darling. Just simple, die cut done. But this one is just darling. So cute, Belinda. And she used the circle and then she cut another circle. She put another die, the other circle in the center of it and made herself a frame. I think we talked about frames last week. And then I have some more that are just by everybody. Oh, and I'm supposed to open this one. Okay. So here she, no, she used the whole die. And she used the Sizzix Mystical Opulent Paper. Look at the ear, it's a hologram, it's beautiful. Look at that. And then you open it up and you get the sentiment from Stampendous. And here she's used the circles that come with this die. She's offset them a little bit. I'm not her sure which she it is, but it's one of the she's. And she's used the memory box paper on all of this. This is all the memory box paper. And the colors just coordinate so lovely together. Oh, I know who this is. This is Doris. And she used the memory box paper to make the rainbow. Use the memory box paper. She used the Sizzix Opulent Mystical to do the dye. And then she used the Stampendous for the sentiment. Cute, right? I know that's Doris because then she followed it up with one and all. I told you they used a lot of the, of the aqua. Here she took, she just cut herself a strip of the aqua, of the colors, the, that tone on tone. <laughs> and then she did her sentiment from Stampendous. They love the Memory Box Aqua. Well, they loved all of the paper from Memory Box. And here is Memory Box paper. And they sanded it. They didn't emboss it. They cut it and they sanded it. Remember we did that in the beginning where I die cut and then sanded just so it gave it a little texture. It made flat paper not look so flat anymore. Oh, and this one's lovely. This is Stamperia paper. Without good question. We just got Stamperia in. It hasn't been loaded yet, but we're getting it. Oh, it's here. It'll go online as soon as we can. Skeleton crew here. It's me, me and Elena. We do all the loading. <laughs> Sometimes our eyes go a bit cross-eyed. <laughs> okay, and then I have Doris. I already showed you this one. And here she's also used the opulent and the circles that came with the die and offset them. Isn't that pretty? Ooh. Here I think she alcohol inked on top of opulent paper. I think she did. And then she's got it backed in well, I can't tell what color she's got it backed in, but I'm thinking she, out oh, that's definitely the iridescence, the silver. So she took the silver away and she alcohol inked on top of it to get that color. Very smart, Doris. And here, done with the charcoal. And look at the striking color. Having a muted backdrop and then those vivid colors just pop right out at you. And this one's beautiful. Look at how pretty is that. These are all Doris. So pretty. She's used the rose gold opulent. She's inked this probably with her oxides if I know Doris. And then last we have Claire and then I do have three layouts for you at the very end. So I already showed you this one from Claire. 
She's used my satin paper and she's used the memory box cardstock to die cut on top of. And I showed you this one. Again, memory box cardstock on top of my satin paper. And here we have the opulent paper just on top. Oh, it looks like it's on top of the memory box rose. So pretty. And here I think she's used reprint. I think this is paper from reprint. They all have a different look and a different feel. Which is nice having them having so many people work on the cards as you get you get everybody's perspective of what they are. Oh, this one's so cute. I love this one. Look at that. Remember? <laughs> Look at what it can be. Mine is just to show you how. This is to show you why. Look at what it can be. Oh my gosh. And look at how beautiful is that. And that's with my satin paper, my Simply Defined satin paper, and the opulent gold. They're very soft, velvety glitter paper. And then this one is just beautiful. So this is the other one that, so she, that centerpiece, she cut this out with just that centerpiece and pieced that back in. Clever, right? Easy to do and so effective. So these are Claire. And then I have got three layouts for you. So the first layout, using, you've got from top to bottom. Let me back it up just a little bit. Using my dies for matting. So there's the layout. And then we have a wedding one, which is beautiful. The colors are just beautiful. Here's the die, only she's used the sentiment right there. And then this is the opulent paper. Look at the pretty colors in there. That's the mystical white with that slight hint of an iridescence to it, but look at this. And at the top, you've got Just Married. Love this one. Love the colors in it. It's so fresh and happy. And then last but not least, they took and cut the flower elements out of the die, got rid of the rest of the frame, and use the flower elements on the layout. They've used the circle up here, but all of these dies, or all of these cuts, were made with the circles that came out of this die set. Talk about useful and practical. I'd like to think so. <laughs> all right, you guys. Oh, it's me, Stacy. Scrapbooking Made Simple, scrapbookingmadesimple.com. I hope you learned something today. I hope you took away or take away the fact that paper has two sides and that you, you just got to try and see what happens. It's only paper, right? So now we've got a new one. It's only paper and paper has two sides and that you see that different papers require different inks. Not all black ink is the same, but with just three inks, you're pretty much covered on any type of surface that you've got that you want to play with. Now, where are you going to get all of this product? Well, you can get some of it at your local independent retailer, and I encourage you to go there to shop if you've still got one. If you don't, then we would love to have you shop with us online, absolutely. But we also would love to have you support other small independent online retailers. Please keep in mind, we are not a major corporation. Not at all. We're teeny, teeny, tiny compared to some of these really big companies. So we are just doing the best we can and pushing through and staying true to who we are, which is about keeping crafting affordable. It's the most important thing to me. If you keep crafting and we keep this hobby going, then 
I get to keep making payroll on Fridays for the staff that's here, and manufacturers get to keep shipping me new products that make our hearts pitter-patter, and I get so excited about, and I get to keep teaching you. And that's really, as you get older, you get a whole lot wiser, and that's really what's more important to me. All right, you guys, it's me, Stacy. Scrapbooking Made Simple, scrapbookingmadesimple.com. I'll see you next week. Bye.